Hey, this is Taylor from Count, and in this video we are going to be talking all about data exploration, and in particular how the Count Canvas can help you uncover patterns faster and share them with your team or with your stakeholders right when you need to. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Now, data exploration can happen at so many different times, um, but let's start with the case where maybe we're exploring a table, maybe it's a new table that's just been put in, a model's just created to put this table in. Maybe you're new and you're new to these tables, uh, whatever it is. Oftentimes we might have to start with a table that we just haven't worked with before. So if we start with that, one of the things we can do here is we can see all of our tables that we have available. And if we want to preview them, we can just click the plus button and it's going to add a cell for us with, uh, we see all of our columns, but we're only going to look at 10 rows at a time. So this is just a little preview for us to have a look at and we can do it for maybe also daily tracks. So if you're new to an entire schema, one of the things I like to do is I'll just bring in all of the kind of preview tables that I want to, just so I have them available in the canvas and I can look at them. And I can just remember, you know, what kind of fields are in here? What does an artist ID look like? That kind of thing. Now, if I want to take this a little bit further and I see something like, you know, artist count, what's, what's kind of a normal number for this? Just showing 10 rows, does it really tell me What's a normal value for this kind of thing? So what I can do is I can again go in here. So this is in Spotify tracks and it's the artist count. And I can add, you can see in here, first of all, we have all of our columns with the type that it is. And so I'm going to take this number and I'll drop it in. And we should get a distribution of how many artists that we have on average. So most of the time it's zero. If we look at something like explicit, yes or no, we should get Again, how often most songs apparently aren't explicit uh, versus true. Uh, we can do this for, you know, things like release date. When are things being released according to our data set? So we have a huge spike in kind of recent years here, 2017 onward, because that's where the data takes place. But there are some older songs that are part of this as well. So this is a really quick way to just use the data menu to just quickly explore a new table that you haven't seen before. But let's say I want to take this a little bit further. And I actually need to kind of get to an answer. And let's say instead of this case, these being brand new tables, let's say I know these tables pretty well. And I even already have a query that I want to start with. So I can go ahead and create a new cell. And I can paste in a query that I have. And this could be a query from, uh, you know, whether you save your own queries on your desktop like I used to do. Maybe you have a shared folder for it. Maybe it's from GitHub. Wherever it is, you can go ahead and paste that query into a new cell. And we can run it. And you can see we get all of our results back. So instead of there being a limit, we get the full 6,000 rows back. We can see how long it took on our database, all that good stuff. We can just scroll through, up and down, and see what's in there. Now, uh, a better way to explore this query, one that makes it easy to understand what's happening, maybe even iterate and tweak it, which is what we need to do in data exploration, we can go ahead and explode this query out into its component cells. So what that's going to do is you see all these CTEs that we have here. Those are each going to become their own cells. So if we do that, we can see now instead of one cell with a giant query, we have four cells with small queries. The benefit of this is, one, it's easier for us to understand it. It's easier for us to just take a look and see how these different queries are in impacting one another. And we can see the overall shape of our model. We can understand what the important links are. We see that this one is kind of, this is a starting node here, and it all kind of comes together in this bottom point here. That means if we need to troubleshoot something, we want to tweak something, we can just tweak it in the CTE really easily without having to kind of copy everything else out, see what that looks like when it runs, and then kind of commit it to live code. We don't have to do all that. Everything is real time. And um, yeah, it's a much faster way to explore data. So uh, we've got our, our data here. And let's say in this case, we, you know, we can see we've got all this artist information and track information from Spotify. We can see how many streams a song has got, how many days it was ranking, et cetera, et cetera. We have some info on the album, some things like danceability and valence, which is a happiness score, basically. We have all these things, um, but we want to kind of understand this a little bit better. Obviously, a key to data exploration is always going to be visualization. So we can visualize any cell we can create a visual. And there's a couple ways to make visuals. Like we saw, we did it from the sidebar earlier, but we can also make it from a template. So if in this case, I just want to see maybe a bar chart and I just want to know like what are our top artists in this data set? 
I can go ahead and drop artists in here. You can see I picked a horizontal bar chart and I can go ahead and sort this and I can see Post Malone and Ed Sheeran. So again, I've made a visual pretty quickly here. I'm just exploring and I'm not going to take the time to customize it or anything like that. There's separate videos about how you can customize this to make it look really great. I usually do that at the very end when I know it's a visual that someone else needs to see. But what I'm exploring, I like to keep it super simple and, you know, I can even make sticky notes and, you know, comment on different things in here and say, you know, wow, Ed and Post are killing it. Things like that. And yeah, let's say we want to kind of take this pattern of Post Malone and Ed Sheeran a little bit further. Uh, so what we can do is we can keep building our DAG down. So let's build another cell. And let's say we just care about where artist equals Ed Sheeran, if I can type. And maybe we even call this Eddie. And so we've got all of our data back for Ed Sheeran. We've got all of his songs on here. And maybe we just want to know, you know, I'm curious, you know, for him, he seems like kind of an upbeat guy a lot of the time. So valence is a measure of his happiness. So I wonder how happy his music is on average. So again, I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to take valence and throw it in here. And yeah, we can see that that's, you know, that's, it seems like it's a little bit more skewed on this side. We can also go ahead and look at what it is overall. So if we want to look at overall valence, we can add that in here. So you can see the overall is kind of normally distributed and Ed seems to be bimodal a bit. So he's kind of got a peak in these this low valence, which suggests it's not a very happy song, um, but also a couple of here in the kind of point, the nines, which would be a really happy song. But let's compare this to Post Malone, who is the top, kind of top streamed artist. So I would expect that he would also might be a kind of an upbeat guy, given people seem to like his music, but let's find out. So I'm going to change this, and I might even call this post. And it's going to ask me if I want to update my reference, which is nice, because I do. I want to keep my name the same. And so, so yeah, he actually doesn't seem to be that happy of an artist. So a lot of his stuff is kind of around 0.25, uh, where one being really happy songs. So, uh, you know, that's kind of interesting to me. And if you didn't catch what I did there, basically to do this kind of quick comparison, I can just copy these two cells, paste them over, swap one filter, and now I have these two areas that are, you know, we're just comparing these two artists now. And if we wanted to, we could continue this. We could continue looking at other variables. We could add in another artist. Um, we can do kind of whatever we wanted to from here. But one of the things that I'll probably like to do now is I probably want to start to add some parameters to this so I can see maybe, you know, Post Malone's music got a little less happy over time. Maybe Was there a change, that kind of thing? So maybe I want to start looking at the date range here. So to do that, I'm going to use control cells and I'm actually going to start my control cell up at the top because I want all of the subsequent cells to be updated when I go. I could obviously just start it here. I can start at any point I want to. You can add parameters and control cells into your analysis at any point you like. But for me, I kind of like to start at the top. So I'm going to go in here, hit cell, then we go date picker and I'm going to make a start date. And let's make this like March 2018. Let's start with that. And we'll add it to add this logic into here. So say day is greater than or equal to select value from start date. And now let's see. So it looks like Ed Sheeran before kind of uh, after 2017, he did get a little bit happier here. Um, but the distribution for Post Malone looks pretty similar. So it's not much of a difference. Um, but yeah, so from here I can kind of keep tweaking this. I can even move this, if this is confusing, to be all the way up here. I can move it down here, and I can say, well, if we look at 2017, again, everything is going to update in real time for us. And yeah, we can see this is maybe when Ed's sad, sadder songs were kind of more prevalent early in his career, which is pretty interesting. So uh, we've done a bit of data exploration. Obviously, exploration can go as deep into it as you want to, which is really nice. And with the canvas, you can just kind of keep going. But I'm going to highlight a couple features I think are going to help you uh, when you get to this point. So let's say you've done your exploration. You have a couple things that you like. Maybe you want to share them. So what I've done here with sticky notes is one way of kind of bringing someone in and being able to highlight different parts of your analysis. Um, another way is by using templates. So we can take a template. One of my favorites is just this simple insight one. 
and we can basically bring one of our visuals in here and just drop it in and you know we can give this name something like this give it a description and we can choose to you know if we want to share something we found we can choose to share it like this and then we can also share how we've built that elsewhere now one of the things to help you um, kind of organize when you get to a state like this there's kind of a, a trick that I'm going to show you. So if you select all of your cells, and if you make sure it's only cells, if you make sure you're not selecting any circles or anything like that, if you hit Command Option L, then you're going to get all of your cells kind of laid out nicely for you. So we can see we have our DAG here, and this is our kind of Spotify analysis where we compared Ed and Post Malone, and then we have our initial analysis over here, we were just doing some exploration. So maybe I want to keep this separate and I can even group this together and maybe move it somewhere else and I can hide it. Maybe this is kind of something I don't want to share. And then this part of my analysis, again, I want to group it together into a frame. So what it's called. And again, I can bring this back in here so we can talk about it. And now we have our analysis in a frame. So, and it's nicely laid out. So that's a keyboard shortcut for you guys to remember is command option L and it's going to automatically lay all this stuff out for you here. Now, um, that's getting close to the end of this video. Uh, I recommend kind of checking out some follow-up videos. There's ones on data storytelling, which go into much more of this presentation phase and how you can take the end of an exploration and turn it into a really custom and compelling story. We also have ones uh, more on data modeling. So if you're thinking about exploring a model, then there's some there that might be helpful. But I do encourage you to kind of take a look at uh, some of the other videos. But I hope that helps if you're trying to do some data exploration. All right, until next time. Bye.